Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel, Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session now, I want to give the clear information of the unification algorithm. What is the purpose of this algorithm? Why we are going to use this algorithm? And what are the rules to be remembered while working th with this algorithm? All these things now we are going to see. Okay, so normally in the proposition logic we are having two literals. It is very easy to determine the two literals cannot both be true at the same time. In the proposition logic, for example, we are having two kinds of the literals. Let us suppose we are having two different kinds of the literals. Okay, so one of the literal I am taking it as P of uh, one is X comma Y. Okay, and the another one is Q of X comma Y. So these are the two literals. They both cannot be true at the same time. Okay, simply look at the L and negational negation L in the predicate logic. This matching process is more complicated since the arguments of the predicate must be considered. Let us suppose, for example, I consider this as the L1, okay, and this as the negation L1, okay. So, we have to match this by using these two literals with the name of the literals and as well as number of the arguments of these two literals and the type of the arguments and as well as uh, both arguments are same or not of these two predicates we have to consider. So, it is a bit complicated process that is what it is saying. Okay. So, matching the two different literals is a complicated process. Okay. In the same manner one more example we will see for example let us see in the third point man of John, John and negation man of John these two terms can get cancelled. Why? Because it is a contradiction actually. See suppose uh, we are having a See here, man of John and as well as negation or uh, man of John, these two are the contradiction. They, these two can be cancelled. Why? Because same name of the literal, same name of the parameter is also there. Okay. So, same name of the argument is also same. That is why both can get cancelled. But see this example that is man of John and as well as man of spot, negation man of spot. These two literals cannot find the contradiction, cannot cannot goes to the contradiction. Why? Because the John and spot are not same. This argument is different from the, this, from the first argument. So, whenever the arguments can be same and whenever the name of the literals can be same, then only the two literals can get cancelled and we can find the contradiction like here but whereas okay so here in this case it is okay but whereas in this case man of John and negation man of spot here the contradiction is not found this case is not possible in this case. And now let us take one more example that is nothing but P. The arguments are same in the P of X comma Y and Q of X comma Y. Even the arguments are same, the name of the literals are completely different. One is P and another one is Q. So that's why here uh, suppose it is negation Q of Y. These two literals cannot get cancelled. Like that we have to match that process. Okay, we have to match the name of the literals, we have to match the uh, arguments of the literals, we have to match the number of the arguments of the literals, then only we can get the contradiction or else we cannot get the contradiction. This matching process requires some set of the rules. Okay, this set of the rules can be given in the unification algorithm. Okay, so the set of the matching rules can be given in this unification algorithm. How it will work? Now we are going to see. Okay, so in order to determine the contradictions like this, like see same number of the arguments, same number of the same name of the literals and uh, one is uh, positive and the one is negation, both can get contradiction. Okay, in order to determine such kind of the contradictions, we need a matching procedure to compare these two literals. Okay, so these two literals can get compared as I told previously and so we can substitute uh, the literals, whether they exist a substitution that makes them identical some of the literals are identical. So, what are the example of the identical literals are C suppose let us suppose that is P of X comma Y. So, P of X 
comma y so in the same manner we are having another one also as p of some uh, a comma b okay so p of a comma b in here in this case uh, contradiction is not possible but the substitution is possible so how can we substitute here in this case that is x by a okay and comma y by b like this you can determine okay so um, the matching process can be done like this you can make the substitutions also and one more thing we have to remember regarding the unification algorithm it is also called as a recursive procedure whereas the resolution is the iterative process it's a straightforward recursive procedure so that is the unification algorithm and how this algorithm is will work now we are going to see just this is the introduction of the unification algorithm okay how it will work now we are going to see now see algorithm unify the two literals one is l1 and another one is l2 okay if l1 and l2 are both variables and as well as the constants i am taking here the very first example as p of x comma y in the same manner another literal i am taking as q of x comma y now we see one by one the rule how it will work q of x comma y okay so the first one is called as the l1 and second one is called the l2 okay so now we see if l1 first rule what it is saying here in this case the first rule what it is saying this is the first one if l1 and l2 are both variables and constants these two are both variables and as well as the constants okay then what we have to do we have to do if l1 and l2 are identical then return nil suppose these two are identical or not these two are not identical because even the number of arguments are same and as well as the same type of arguments these two can have but the coming to the literals these two literals can have two different things that is one is p and another one is q so these two are not identical okay so these two are not identical so we never return to the nil here okay and next coming to the second rule if l1 is a variable and l1 occurs in l2 then return fail else return l2 comma l1 l1 is a variable in l2 so how to uh, represent it l1 is a variable in l2 for example you are having q of p because p is a l1 okay so it is acting as a variable of p of x comma y is acting as a variable in q okay p of x comma y so it's a variable and then again its own q's own variabilities x comma y so l1 occurs in l2 so q is the total l2 here here l1 occurs in this l2 so what we have to do then then return fail and else return l2 by l1 else return what l2 by l1 okay so q of x by by p of x by, uh, p of x comma y and also l2 is a variable in l1 uh, then l2 occurs in l1 then return fail suppose the q occurs in which cases we have to return fail now i am saying the another case now so what is the another case l2 is a variable and l2 occurs in l1 that means p of in the p the l2 occurs that is q of x comma y okay and then comma x comma y so what it is l2 l2 in l2 is occurring in 
whole L1. So if L2 occurs in L1 like that, okay, like this, then also return L1 by L2, that is P of x comma y by Q of x comma y, else return fail. Okay, so these all these three cases it returns. One first case it returns nil, and second case it returns fail. If L1 is a variable, it is occurring as a variable in L2, then return fail as this is the first. Let us suppose we have taken these two are the three separate cases. Okay, so L1 and L2, L3 are identical, return nil. Here in this case, L1, see here, L1 and L2 are not identical because this is P and this is Q. Both are not equal and not identical. So that's why it returning the nil. And now coming to the, if L1 is a variable, then L1 occurs in L2, then return fail. See, this is the case number 2. I am noting here the case number 2 here. This is the case number 2 and this is the case number 3. For this case, this is the example because L1 occurs in L2. Okay. So, this is the example of the case 2. Okay. And now we see the example of case 3, this one. This is the example of case 3. Okay. L2 occurs in L1 like that. Okay. And the next rule is if the initial predicate symbols of L1 and L2 are not identical. So, what are the initial predicate symbols of L1 and L2? The earlier we have considered in the previous example. C. P1. P p of x comma y and q of x comma y these two symbols are not identical so one is p of x comma y and this is the l1 okay and another one is q of x comma y okay so this is what L2. Okay. So the initial initial predicate symbols are not identical. Here it is P, it is Q. Both are not identical. Then also return fail. That's what it is saying. And L1 and L2 are having the different number of the arguments. L1 and L2 are having different number of the arguments means what? Let us suppose we have taken that is P of. x comma y okay and q here in this case both are having the same number of arguments p holds the two number of arguments and as well as q holds the two number of the arguments for example i have p of x comma y i have some another one that is uh, q of x comma y comma z okay here the number of parameters are different from p to q so then also it returns what fail okay so both are having same number of literals only it uh, supports and both are having a different number of the literals also it won't support and if p comma x comma y and p of x comma y a q of x comma y comma z having the different number of the arguments here p is having only the two number of the arguments Whereas Q is having X, Y, Z, three number of the arguments. Then also it returns fail. Okay. Then when it unifies, for example, so 1 to N numbers are in L1. Okay. How can we unify this? For example, suppose we are having a P of X comma Y, P of X comma Y. and p of a comma b okay both are having same number of arguments both literals also same then the unification is possible you can use the substitute function here so what is the substitute function that i am going to use here is x by a p of we, i am unifying these two literals now that is nothing but how can i am unifying now ith argument of l1 with ith argument of l2 so what is the first i is the first one so ith argument of l1 
with ith argument of L2. So, what is the ith argument of L1? Here it is x. And what is the ith argument of L2? Here it is a. So, I am unifying this. That is nothing but P of x by a comma y next increments it increments i so then uh, y by j argument y by b so like that i can unify the two literals the resultant will be like this okay so like this i can unify the literals with the same name of the argument literal names and uh, different types of the arguments but same number of the arguments then only you can unify in either case like this if l1 occurs in l2 or l2 in occurs in l1 are wrong number of the arguments in both literals and initial predicate symbols are not identical in such cases we cannot unify when we can unify when both the uh, variable names are same that is p of x comma y and as well as uh, c here q p p of x comma y this is one literal and this is the another literal then you can unify that the ith element of p and ith element of another element another literal p we can unify as x by a and y by b okay so like this you can work with this unification algorithm this unification algorithm determines uh, a recursive procedure it is used to determine the contradictions and it is one kind of the matching procedure by satisfying certain number of the rules and regulations like this it's very easy if you understand you can write uh, in the examinations also if you take these examples you can write very well okay so this is the main uh, motivation of the unification algorithm why we are using this is for the matching purpose of the two different kinds of the literals with the same number of the literals only we can unify and same number of the arguments we can unify even the number of the arguments uh, are same the arguments must be different like uh, p of x comma y and p of a comma b then only you can unify like this with the ith element of one literal and ith element of another literal and jth element of one literal and jth element of another literal then only you can unify like this only this rule satisfies for the unification okay so this is the unification algorithm if you have any doubts just to tell me in the comment section and if at all anybody didn't subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel intelligible tutorials thank you one and all